On today's episode of Tuesday Talks with Opie, I chat with the incredible Jordan Taylor. We talk about balance in relationships that are both professional and personal, and how she uses her platform to highlight and help others. Join us for today's conversation. And welcome to another episode of Tuesday Talks with Opie. My special guest is a realtor of a high-end residential real estate and one half of the Taylor Martin team, Jordan Taylor. Welcome to the show. Hi, Opie. How are you? I'm doing amazing. I'm so happy that, you know, you gave me the opportunity and your time to talk to you today. Um, with a quick glance into your social media, I can see that you're family oriented, you're loyal to your friends, and you're a huge advocate of disadvantaged groups, and you're doing things every day by actions, not just words alone, in helping others and helping the world. So I've always found that so fascinating about you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me and, and for noticing. Um, it's definitely been a journey and it's been so fulfilling. So, I mean, I would, I would be lying to say I wasn't selfishly doing it out of, you know, I've, I've gained so much from doing the things I've done. So thank you for noticing. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, before we get into your acts of service, I really want to talk about your, the business aspect, your professional life. Um, you started Taylor Martin team with your best friend, Carissa Martin. And how did that even start to begin with? I know you've mentioned in your stories in the past that you went from just um, helping your friends find homes and everything, but how did you decide to take this to another level? Um, honestly, I have to give Carissa almost all the credit here because I'm a person, I would never call myself like a career oriented woman before I would say maybe three years ago. I'm, how do I make money so that I can travel and eat how I want to? <laughs> that was my mindset. And Carissa has always been very much like a workhorse. She's the wake up at 6 a.m., do all the emails, spreadsheets, spreadsheets. And I'm like, I'm just going to go meet some people. And <laughs> so there's this synchronous, there's like this perfect meld of our personalities and our, um, our work ethic just really works for what we do for a living. So I started real estate about a year before Carissa did. Uh, and like you said, it was just a casual thing. Let me get my license because I've been finding everyone apartments in New York anyways, mm -hmm. and I'm fantastic at it. So let me get my license, but at least I can make a dollar here and there doing it. And then um, I was working with this like older white man and it was, you know, whatever, but there was no like magic or chemistry when it came to us doing what we were doing. It was a job. Right. Right. And then Carissa came into the mix and Carissa and I have known each other since we were in fourth grade. We've been best friends since wow. fourth grade. We were wearing matching Hollister outfits together. It was really cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so she moved to New York and her parents have kind of always been involved in real estate. And it was kind of just one of those no brainers where I was like, she was selling high end uh, fashion at the time. And I was like, you're an incredible saleswoman. We get along. We already live together. Come work with me. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, yeah, yeah. So she like immediately got her license. And then it was me, her and the old white man that we were working with. And we just automatically realized that it just wasn't working with the three of us. He didn't really like, I don't think the dynamic of two very strong females now. Cause with me, it's like, I'm amenable to kind of anyone, you know, I can get along with you. I can work right. with whoever, but then you put me and Carissa in a room with you. And it's like, <laughs> Oh no, we're going to steal this show a little bit. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so it just kind of took off from there and, and it just made sense. Wow. That's, I, I think that's such an interesting thing. Like when you're working with your loved ones, like for me, I work with my family on a daily basis, but sometimes you don't always get along. You love them, but there's sometimes when it comes to like something professional, something to do with the business that you're not on the same side. How do you deal with that? How do you separate your, I love you, but. <laughs> Oh, it took time. We had like an extreme learning curve when it came to that because Chris and I are best friends at the time we were roommates, we were working together. And then also she started dating my cousin. So <laughs> it was 24 seven just together. <laughs> oh my God. There was no way to like evade each other at all. Right. And so we had to figure out how to operate. 
it was more so how do we operate? Because work-wise, I think we work very well together. And that wasn't the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue was how to separate the two. Like you said, how do I, how do we not let our personal life? How do we not let, you know, your drama with your relationship get into our friendship and our, and our business? How do we let, not let our friendship when we're irritated with with each other? How do we still show up for our, for our clients and, you know, with a smile on and look cute doing it? Um, it took fighting, honestly, it took us getting to the brink of, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. This isn't, I I don't want to lose my friend. So let's just not work together anymore. And, you know, we, we took some quiet time apart from each other and we realized what the hell are we doing? (laughs) No, we are strong (laughs) enough at this point to know that we can get past these things. Like our fights in our lifetime together have, we've had less than a handful and of the big blowouts, you know, and it's, been what three days to become like to talk it over and and figure things out together and so it it was just a matter of being like we're idiots to not do this together and and then having a conversation of what do you need from me and what do I need from you and then we realize another really important thing this comes back to again who we are what differentiates ourselves is you know I'm the social one I like being out late at night I like so I bring in all the clients you know Mm-hmm. And Carissa is the early morning worker. So we realized once, once I realized that she wasn't um, faulting me for not being also up with her at 6 a.m. doing that. Right. And she realized that I wasn't faulting her for not being out with clients late at night. Right. Then we realized, okay, I got this. You got that. We're good. If you want to join me, great, but I don't need you. If I want to join you, great, but I don't need you. And ever since then, it's been smooth sailing. It's like respecting each other's role and what, like how, what role you play into making this thing together. Cause at the end of the exactly. day, it's the results you want. You both want the same results, but you just yeah. have to <laughs> play your exactly. role. Exactly. <laughs> play your strengths that. and know that there's no guilt. Like right. there's no guilt in doing your thing. And I think that if you can find that in a work partner, like there is, you, there's nothing you guys can't accomplish together. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of that, like, I love when I see both of you in your tour videos of like the homes or the apartments you're about to sell. And like you said, with the chemistry, you can just tell how much love you have for one another. And I think sometimes that's missing in the traditional sense of like a virtual tour. People are just used to just seeing the the beautiful place. Great. It looks amazing. But both of you bring life into that space you know you make it feel like home before the person even gets into there how important was that technique that love for when you know with the shutdown and everything when people couldn't visit homes when couldn't people couldn't actually physically be there how important was that dynamic of you two in being able to communicate with your with your customers um you know i've never actually thought of it in that sense but i think you know in hindsight probably a little bit of everything because you're getting, you know, the, like you said, the entertainment of just seeing these beautiful places, but maybe you would, you didn't have the ability to be around your friends or be around your own personal dynamics that Chris and I have. So maybe, I mean, I'm speaking for everyone that watched, but maybe there was a bit of, you know, um, like living vicariously, I bet a, a bit through right. us. Right. Um, And so I don't know, it's kind of cool to think about, but for (laughs) for me, it was great because, you know, we got to pretty much quarantine together. So for me, it was very easy to be like, you know, I, I get to work and still hang out with my friends and it's, you know, a necessity. We were, we were a necessity when it came to real estate. Thank God. That you're, you started off in New York city, but now you are also showing homes in different, you know, other cities and everything. Um, How was that transition, you know, with, from New York city to now everywhere, how has that been for you too? I mean, it's been cool. I think my favorite thing about real estate in New York is that you go into these buildings and you have no idea what you're going to get, you know, it's, and, and that's what sets it apart from almost anywhere else. Like you kind of know what you're going to get. You drive into a neighborhood, you kind of know the era of homes, you know, you have an idea in New York, you can go from one apartment and right next door is a completely different apartment. Mm. So there's an aspect of that, that I miss so much. New York, as far as expanding now to the rest of the States, it's cool because now we have square footage. Now we have yards. Now we have pools and it's neat. And and you realize how different architecture is depending on, you know, different cities, different States, different eras. So it's just expanded, you know, one, my knowledge when it comes to different types of homes, Mm -hmm. you also have different types of clients. Now we have a lot more families. We have a lot of, 
you know, once the pandemic hit, we were getting so many athletes that just wanted to be out of their major cities and into an LA beach house or, and so it's, it's, it's just expanded things and the bigger, the better, the cooler, the better, the older, the better. Um, So it's been fun for sure. What has been your favorite city to um, find someone a home so far? Huh? Let me think about that for a moment. You know, no LA's obviously been great. New York's obviously been great. Some um, surprising cities that I've really loved. Well, so we've done quite a bit of work in Albuquerque, New Mexico, or like outlying New Mexico cities or Albuquerque cities. And those are cool because you get these aspects, these like Native American influences in these homes. They're very Southwestern. Uh, they just have so much character and so many, so much like story behind them. So I think, right. I think New Mexico has really surprised me for sure. I think there was one that you highlighted. I think it's, it was like made out of, if I'm, I might be mistaken. It was like recyclable, like elements in the whole house Mm -hmm. Like everything was, and it was, it was so unique and artistic and every part you went was a unique floor and walls. That was pretty cool. And I think that was in Albuquerque, right? Yeah, that was in Taos. So it's like, I think it's like an hour in Albuquerque and it's, that's called the earth ship and yeah, fully sustainable you're completely off the grid. Um, I personally could vacation there. I don't think I could ever live in something like that. I'm just not, right. I don't have the, the dedication that others might have, but like we can do this temporarily, so cool but, um, I don't know if yeah, I could. let's go do a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need great Wi-Fi. I need, right. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a lot to handle. I'm a bit of a, of a Paris Hilton. <laughs> I know you're a huge fan of, um, bathtubs too uh <laughs> which one has Girl, been you've done your research <laughs> i i told you i'm a huge fan i want like <laughs> i love it i love it which one has been the favorite like your favorite one where you're like man i need to have this in my house um okay so i don't know if you remember the invisible house Technically, it's not a bathtub that's inside of there. It's like a full size swimming pool in the yeah. living room. Yeah. <laughs> the one I mean, you jumped clearly, in. Clearly, <laughs> that's the winner. Exactly. Fully clothed right. is my thing. It's my calling card. Um, yeah. So that house is epic. It's like it's in the middle of Joshua Tree. It's all these reflective windows all the way around. And so it just kind of reflects the um the nature of where you're at. It's it's stunning. But inside is like <sighs> It's not Olympic size, but it's super long. It's a beautiful, you know, modern pool in the center of the living room. And it is just all the vibes. <laughs> and I can't, ah, uh, that is somewhere I could live for sure. For sure. Great Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. great vibe, everything. Great <laughs> Wi-Fi. Fire pit, lots of parking, an hour and 45 minutes from LA. Like it's great. <laughs> I hope they have like, do they have any type of protection guard? Cause I'm just thinking of like great nights where people are probably not in their right mind. And there's, there's literally just a pool in the middle of the living room. So <laughs> honestly, <laughs> no, nope, you'd be pretty screwed in that, in that situation. Only swimmers allowed. Only swimmers allowed. <laughs> <laughs> so apart from the, you know, selling beautiful homes, uh, one of the things I enjoy about how you use your platform is again, just highlighting amazing organizations and people who you believe make a difference in the world. Um, And I believe this January, you started 12 months of giving. What was the story behind it? Like, why did you start it? And what did you hope? And what are you hoping to achieve with that? Yeah. um, I mean, it's been such a crazy journey with it so far. Um, Started in January. Actually, I started working on it in November and I've always kind of dipped a toe in philanthropy and I know it's always been great and I've loved the people that I've met and I loved the causes that I've, you know, sort of gotten to know. And obviously we went through this incredibly sad and anxiety ridden year Mm -hmm. and I got to a point, it was the first time that I'd really experienced my own personal anxiety. And I got to a point where I was like, I need purpose. I don't have purpose right now. And it's because, you know, we weren't working Mm. really like we were in New York. Um, and and more so I didn't have things to fill my day. 
Mm. I didn't have distractions from purpose. And so, so I, I think, honestly, I don't think I've ever had or fulfilled my purpose until now. And so it was like a random night in November. And there's this organization who is one of our 12 months. It's our September month. They're called Be The Match. And they are a directory basically, or a, what's the word? Um, they work with sickle cell and other like blood diseases. And they okay. are, yeah. So they like are a donor, um, like a donor match. A registry. Kind of yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. They're wonderful. They're the biggest one in the world for, for what this is. And they got me with one of their like paid ads. One, I'm a sucker for paid ads in general. I've bought so much <laughs> random jewelry from the paid ads. It's really bad. My phone's listening. Now they know, um, <laughs> but they got me with this young, I think, I think, um, his name's Thor. I want to say he's like seven or eight, mm. this adorable kid and he's sitting and talking about he's literally walking us through this pain um uh, like this pain epidemic that he's having or this pain moment that he's having with sickle cell and he's talking us through you know how it's moving down through his body and I was ugly crying I was just like he's perfect what can I do you know like there has to be something and and they made it so easy with our organization you know it's a swipe up go here join the registry. Here's what we need. Sickle cell is something that affects more predominantly the black community, a little bit in the Latin community as well. And the problem, there's so many like underlying issues here is that the black community is mostly affected, but the black community and rightly so is the most opposed to, you know, getting involved with medical things and Uh getting like, they don't trust the healthcare system. And so now the goal is like, how do I reach out? I literally sent it to all my friends, all my friends of color. And we're like, Hey, like, maybe this is weird of me to do. I don't know if this is like morally the right thing or ethically the right thing. I don't know, but we need to save this kid's life. So all of you need to donate. I've donated or get on the registry to donate. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things too, where it's like, you're one in, I think you're one in 400 or I'm going to get all these stats wrong, but like one in 400 that you'll even be chosen in your lifetime to donate blood marrow, bone marrow or blood uh, for sickle cell. And so just the more people we put on this registry, obviously the more chances yes, we have of we saving those lives. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to send you the link, girl. We can get you yeah. signed up. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so easy. It's a mouth swab and you return it. They do it. it they make it so easy. Um, up and I was like, okay, I want to get involved. And then it kind of uh, trickled down until who else can I get involved with? What other organ? The fact that I didn't know about this organization kind of throws me off. What other organizations are out there that are doing incredible things that I don't know about. And, and clearly my sphere doesn't know about. And so that kind of, you know, I went into like this frenzy that night of like just researching amazing organizations and it just sort of grew and just kept growing and snowballing. And I told my friends about it and a couple of them were like interested and yeah, like that sounds cool. And I think as it developed into, you know, what it is now, it's just that's all, the best way to describe it is it snowballed. People saw other people getting involved and seeing how much joy it brought them. And they're like, I want that. I want to do that. Or they saw us out in Skid Row and they're like, wow, what an, what a tangible thing to do. I can do that. I can give three hours on my Sunday morning to do that. And that's kind of, I'm a person that's very, um, I'm very ADD when it comes to work. The second I'm bored, I'm like, then on to the next. And what 12 Mog affords me is we really are onto like another cause 30 days later. And it's, I mean, ideally that I'm um, not ideally, but essentially that was the idea. And now we've become so in love with these organizations that <laughs> now they just accumulate. So it's like, now we have our January, February, March, April, May. For the next year. Them. Yeah. So it's been amazing. And, and 12 Mog is just something that's given, given back so much to my own joy and happiness. And hopefully this becomes, you know, the future of it. I would hate to box it in. I don't know. I have no idea where the future is. I know that it gets bigger and I know we have a bigger outreach. And I think eventually we want to make it where it's like, a, you know, there's a 12 Mog New York and there's a 12 Mog LA and there's a 12 Mog Chicago. And I want to delegate. I, w- I want to pick leaders in those areas and let mm-hmm. them, you know, you choose, you know, like, right. like OB, you, you choose for New York, your 12 organizations and you choose your team and we'll give you the tools. We'll give you the social media. We'll give you the algorithm to make this work for you. And so I think that's like the, 
far off goal. And maybe that'll happen sooner than we think, but right. We'll yeah, see. I, I'm so impressed with it. Um, I saw that you, you were doing free healthcare, like you said, on Skid Row, like two weeks ago. And I was like, that is mind blowing. And there was such a long line of people. Oh, people oh, there. It was like, nuts for me. <laughs> And it made yeah, me wonder, it was, like, it was crazy. it's also an other opportunity for people who sometimes can't give money as a, as a means of donating to foundations. This is now a, a way for exactly. them to say, well, I can give my time. I can volunteer just mm-hmm. a little bit of my time as much as I can to these foundations, you know, even if it's not just, Absolutely. you know, through money. Um, this month, what is, the, what is the organization that you are highlighting? We just launched May and it's called Miracle Messages. They are based out of San Francisco, but they operate all across the States. And I think that they might be international now, but they're awesome. They, um, the founder, Kevin, basically came up with this idea. He was like, look, there are resources for the homeless when it comes to food, when it comes to housing, when it comes to, you know, very necessary things Mm -hmm. to sustain life. Mm -hmm. But the problem, um, is relational poverty. He said, it's, it's easy to, you know, the, the very logical, this person is hungry, feed them, but this person is lacking love. Mm -hmm. What do you do in that situation? And he says that a lot of the homeless will say that they didn't feel homeless when they lost their homes or they lost their jobs. They felt homeless when they lost their relationship to family and friends. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they set out to reconnect and, and reassess these relationships between, you know, our neighbors who are experiencing homelessness and the people that they love. A lot of times they say that on average, they are without communication for like 15 years from the people that they love. Wow. And it's, it's crazy. So they have like this incredible team of, they call them, um, I think it's digital detectives. And these people, they're like retired, uh, private eyes, they're, they're moms, they're, kids. It's, it's everyone that are like, let me take my time to just try and find the people that are missing our friends on the street. And they've, I think they've reunited over 450 people now. It's incredible. He's amazing. And so you can get involved monetarily and you can, you know, donate to help fund everything. You can get involved voluntary by, you know, going and, um, they have these like, uh, I think it's an app now but you go out and if you, you can find, you know, your own local, um, friends that are experiencing homelessness and, you know, Hey, are you missing anyone? Is there someone you're trying to get a message to and you upload as much information as you can and you upload a message, a video message from them. And then the digital detectives will work to get that, find the person, the recipient of that message. And it's pretty mind blowing the work they do. Hmm. I mean, I think, you know, it's like what they say, you know, a house is not a home. It's really the relationships that we have with people. And I think during this pandemic, we all felt a certain loss of like not, not getting that connection with people. So imagine, like you said, 15 years of not having that sustainable relationship with someone you love, that is truly heartbreaking. So for an organization to be able to bring people together, that is, that's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. And they're, they're awesome. Um, you can also get involved. There's a thing called the buddy. I think it's miracle friends. It's like a buddy program. So you could sign up today and basically they'll, they'll connect you with an unhoused, um, an unhoused person. And you give them, I think two hours of your time a week. They wow. can text you or call you from like, it's some of like separate number. It's like a WhatsApp or something they give mm-hmm. you, but just to like have, you know, a friendly hello on the other side of the line, you know, cause they don't get a lot of that so, sometimes. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's another cool little option that they offer. That's amazing. Um, you touched on this a little bit. Um, you talked about your purpose and I, I said that that's going to be the last question I I'm going to ask you is what is your purpose and how would you advise others to find their purpose? Uh, it's so fitting that you would ask this question. So two days ago I got the team. So we have a, we're a five person board right now, five person board of, board of females. They're all girlfriends that I've, you know, kind of grown up with. And I put us through a workshop through a friend of mine, his name is Dan Hill. And he came up with this incredible workshop for, um, like businesses, organizations, individuals, and his day job is a fixer. He's like a fixer for, he's like the Olivia Pope. Um, <laughs> he says the Olivia Pope, but with ethics, um, <laughs> 
he is not sleeping with the president. Right. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, So he put together this, he, he basically is like, I come and I rescue these businesses when they go through these, you know, emergencies, I guess, essentially. And he's like, so management crisis. There you go. So I was like, what is that word? Crisis crises. And he was like, I, I kind of know the patterns and I can predict when they're going to happen. So why can't I then figure out how to mitigate them? Let me, let me go and, and meet with, so he met with us and was like, let me walk you through all the ways to set yourself up in a way that you cannot fail. Hmm. And the biggest driver of that was purpose. Hmm. He said, you could have mission statements, you can have values, you can have all these things, but your purpose needs to transcend not only through the company, but through to every single person that works at that company. And so he had us do this exercise of like, what's your purpose? And I've never answered that question <laughs> until two days ago. Wow. And I, and I think the way to find that is to go and, and find what you're good at. What is something that you innately do already. It's not something that you're striving for. It's something that like, it's who you are. And my purpose has always been connecting in one way or another. So, you know, in school, it was connecting. I I would bring all the different social groups together, or I would introduce friends to other friends that would never meet otherwise. And, you know, that's now become, you know, now I connect people to homes or I through 12 mod connect people to nonprofits and I connect those nonprofits to sponsorships. And so it's just finding a way to use my sphere and use my influence for good. That is my purpose here. I love it. I love it. I love it too. (laughs) (laughs) That's, this is why I love you. And this is why I, I am a big fan of you. And I follow your page because I can, I can see that personable the personable person you are and how you do Thank connect you. with people. You're, you're so easygoing and you've made this interview, this connection so beautiful. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to learn more about your business and your philanthropic work. It's really been amazing. Um, so if anyone wants to catch up with you, stay, you know, keep in touch, how can they find you? Uh, so if you want to find me personally, you can find me on Instagram at Jordan Taylor. Now it's J O R D Y N. My parents were very unique there. J O R D Y N T A Y L O R N O W. Uh, if you want to get involved with 12 mog, uh, you can visit www12, the number one, two M O G.org. We also have an Instagram that's spelled out T W E L V E, uh, month of giving. And yeah, I mean, I am like you said, like I, it takes two and I'm very grateful to you for getting us together and getting us in this virtual room and to meet, you know, your, uh, your podcast followers. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really, what do you call podcast followers? I don't know. I'll have to figure (laughs) followers, fans, followers, listeners, listeners, listeners. There we go. That works. Yes. We're trying to find this new name for it and it's already there. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I I really appreciate you. And I'm so excited to get to know you further now that we've made this connection. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you to our listeners for today, for joining us on today's conversation. Until next time, have a good one, everyone. Bye. Bye guys. Thank you.